Now enter into this region here, the trachea. So let's close this up again. You can see part of the trachea right here, the trachea. Here with this part of the model, you see the trachea here. Now the trachea consists of these uh, semicircular cartilage rings. These semicircular cartilage rings, okay, they're called the tracheal cartilages. They're semicircular, meaning that they're not completely closed off. They're open on the back so that they can allow the esophagus to stretch slightly when swallowing food. So when you swallow food, it comes down through the esophagus here, and it allows for the esophagus to expand slightly forward because this area is not a closed off, completely closed off area. There is no cartilage here. The cartilage is only the front portion of the trachea. So these are incomplete rings. Although with the model here, you do see some light blue here. However, that's not, re that's not representing cartilage, representing some other type of connective tissue. Okay? Now, <clears throat> the trachea then comes down this way, and just a around this area, the trachea then bifurcates or splits into the primary bronchi. Primary bronchi. Bronchus means one, bronchi means many. So you have two primary bronchi, one for the left side of the, uh, of the body, one for the right side or for the right lung. So this is my left primary bronchus, and you can see that it's slightly much longer than the right primary bronchus, okay? Now, the primary bronchi then will branch out into these bronchi called secondary bronchi, secondary bronchi. For the right lung, you will have two secondary bronchi, one corresponding to each of the lobes of the left lung. So in the left lung, you will have two secondary bronchi, one for superior lobe, one for inferior lobe. On the right lung, you will actually have three secondary bronchi, one corresponding to each lobe of the right lung. So here's the secondary bronchus, secondary bronchus, secondary bronchus. Now, the secondary bronchi will further branch out into another bronchi called tertiary bronchi. Can you see tertiary bronchi with this model? Let me try to point it out. This is the secondary bronchus. Secondary bronchus, all of this here. And here you see your tertiary bronchi. Tertiary, tertiary, tertiary. Now the number of tertiary bronchi will vary. It will vary. It could be uh, several different tertiary bronchi. So I will not give you an exact number how many. But you do have to know that there are there's a right primary bronchus and two secondary left secondary bronchi. On the right side, you have a primary bronchus and three secondary bronchi. One, two, three. Okay? And tertiary, the number will vary. So these are examples, good examples of tertiary bronchi. Now, the tertiary bronchi will further branch out into much smaller, tinier tubes. We call these bronchioles. Bronchioles. These are bronchioles. There's different bronchioles. There's large ones, small ones. And then the final, the final ones are called terminal and respiratory bronchioles, which are too tiny really to see with this model. So you can simply just say that these are bronchioles which means small bronchi, okay? Now, <clears throat> uh, what else can we appreciate from this model? We can also see here the uh, part of the esophagus. The esophagus comes down this way, and it will lead to the stomach. You have your diaphragm muscle, which is a, which is a skeletal muscle. Uh, then you see here uh, also the blood vessels, okay? You remember from, blood, uh, from the blood vessels anatomy, we saw that we had, <clears throat> uh, we had these blue-colored 
vessels here that were bringing blood to the lungs so that it can be oxygenated, so that it can oxygenate the blood. And we call these the pulmonary arteries, right? Pulmonary artery. And you had your pulmonary veins right here. So what about these little branches? These are just branches of the pulmonary arteries and pulmonary veins. So you don't have to worry too much with this model. Okay. <clears throat> uh, then also you have here the part of the arch of the aorta, part of the su superior ven vena cava, and those branches which we saw in more detail with the heart model. Now, uh, perhaps one last thing is uh, the lungs, if I'm just going to put back the right lung just so you see quickly, the right lung has sort of a triangular shape, triangular shape. So the lungs will have a base that rests on the diaphragm, and it will have the apex up here, which seems to be more pointier, an apex. So the apex is up here, the base is resting on the diaphragm muscle. Uh, some of you may also be wondering that you just saw a few minutes ago, the inside of the lungs had these colored, these different little colored structures. Because this is a, a section of the lung, these are also sections of these vessels here, the little vessels that we mentioned. In this case, red is representing uh, <clears throat> veins, veins. Blue is representing arteries. Now, you may be wondering why. Again, the oxygen, the oxygen uh, from the lungs is going into the, ar into the veins, and that's oxygenated in the blood, and for that reason, the blood here is more of a brighter red color. Whereas the, the arteries are carrying more deoxygenated blood, and for that reason, the veins have a bluish or more paler red color. Okay, so these blue ones here actually represent uh, branches of the uh, pulmonary arteries. The red will represent little tiny branches of the pulmonary veins. Okay, and these little white things here, uh, they're just representing uh, bronchioles and bronchi. Okay, so I think that pretty much uh, covers the anatomy of the respiratory system. Oh, bef before there is one last thing. I want to show you with this head model because the air is brought into your, into your respiratory system through your, through your nose mainly through your nose, normally through your nose, okay? People do breathe with their mouth too, but that's not really the adequate form to breathe in. You should be breathing in and out with your nose because constant breathing with your mouth can lead to irritation of the throat. Uh, so, when do people breathe with their mouth? When they're snoring, sometimes when they're sleeping, or when they have congestion in the nose and they can't breathe with their nose, so they use their mouth. But normal breathing should come in through the nose, into the nasal cavity. Here in the nasal cavity, you will have these, uh, the nasal concha, and the meatesis, which are the grooves underneath the concha. These grooves are the nasal meatesis underneath the concha. Okay? <clears throat> that will help the air to turbinate, to spin around and filter a little bit longer in the nasal cavity. Up here in the roof of the nasal cavity, you have a special epithelium for the sense of smell. It's called the olfactory epithelium. Then, the air then goes down this way, and it reaches the first part up here of the pharynx. This is called the nasopharynx, this area, the nasopharynx. Then it passes down here into the oropharynx, which is the portion behind the oral cavity the oropharynx, so if I put this back like this, okay, this would be my nasopharynx, oropharynx, and then finally, the last portion right here, just behind the larynx here, is called the laryngopharynx, the laryngopharynx. And that pretty much concludes uh, the respiratory system, okay?